If you decide to take your PMP exam from your own home, it's so very important that you meet all of the technical system requirements so you avoid any issues with the online proctor or the actual testing software. So we're going to break this up into four parts. First, requirements to take your PMP exam from home. Second, how to prepare to take your exam online. And third, what to expect on the day of your online exam. So part one, what are the requirements you need to take the PMP exam from home? Your exam is administered through Pearson View's online testing software. So the equipment that you need is first and foremost, a laptop or a desktop computer with only one single monitor. And second, this is the most important one. You need to have a webcam. All of the equipment and technical requirements you need to meet for a PMI, I'll be listing them in the description bar down below. So make sure to check them out. Now a fair bit of warning here. I recommend that you use your own personal laptop. Do not use a laptop that was issued by your employer or your company because Firewalls and antivirus or any type of security settings may prevent the testing online software from actually working correctly. The laptops that I recommend can either be Windows or Mac based. Both are acceptable, however, you have to make sure that your laptop meets the minimum operating system requirements for running Pearson Views testing software. Because if you don't, then you'll need to purchase a laptop that does meet these minimum requirements. So here are the laptop specifications that you need to meet at a bare minimum. Keep in mind that all of these requirements are the latest at the time of this recording. So be sure to check out all the links in the description bar down below for more detail. Your operating system must either be Windows 10 or 11. For Macs, you must be using Mac OS High Sierra and higher. Older versions of Windows or Mac OS will not work, so be very, very careful here. You also need to have a minimum of 4 gigabytes of RAM with a minimum screen resolution of 1024 by 768 in 16-bit color. Now, if you're not sure if you meet these requirements, here's what you should do. If you're using a Mac, click on the Apple icon on the top left side of your screen and select About This Mac. On the Overview tab, this is showing that I'm using a Mac OS Monterey, which has 32 gigabytes of memory. Now, when I go to the display tab, this shows that I'm using a 16 inch display or 3456 by 2234. This meets all of the system requirements, so I'm all set. Now, if you're using a Windows computer, on the bottom left corner next to the Windows icon, type in settings into the search bar and a settings window will pop up. On the left hand side, if you click on the first option for display, you'll see your display resolution shown towards the bottom of the screen. In my case, it's 1920 by 1080. On the left hand side, now click on the option for about. Here, you'll find out how much RAM is installed and what version of Windows you're running. In my case, it shows that I have an HP computer with 16 gigabytes of RAM using Windows 10. This meets all of the system requirements, so I'm all set. Now you don't need a super expensive laptop to take your PMP exam from home so long as you meet these requirements, so you should be fine. Now if you do need a laptop, then I'll include a few links down below in the description bar to a few that I do recommend. But in general, if you're someone who prefers Windows, I recommend going either with an HP or a Dell laptop that has a screen size of a minimum of at least 15 inches with at least 512 gigabytes of storage along with either eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of RAM. For the processor, I recommend going with Intel and sticking with the most latest versions. So Intel Core i7 or i9. Now, if you prefer Mac, Macs, then I highly recommend the newer versions of the MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air. Now, in terms of webcams, your webcam must be placed at eye level so that your head and your shoulders, they're within frame during your exam. Your webcam must have a minimum resolution of 640 by 480 at 10 frames per second. I personally recommend everyone to invest into an external webcam such as the Logitech C922 and connecting it to the top of your laptop in case there are any technical laptop issues on the day of your actual exam. It's always better to be over-prepared, especially since your PMP exam is one of the most important certifications in your career. So I personally like to earn the safety side 
just in case. The external webcam, which I highly recommend, is a Logitech C922 because it's essentially a plug and play device. Once you connect it to your laptop, it immediately works and it does not require any software to be installed. The webcam easily clips onto the top of your laptop screen and it connects to your computer using a USB adapter. So if you're using a MacBook laptop like I'm using, you can connect the Logitech webcam directly to your dongle and it's going to work immediately. Aside from your laptop and your webcam, you'll also need to make sure that you're using a supported internet browser such as Safari, Chrome, or Firefox. Your internet connection must also have a reliable and stable speed of at least three megabytes per second. On to part two, how to prepare to take the PMP exam from home. The online exam is exactly the same version as the one you would be taking from physical testing center. It's the same exact questions in the same testing format. But here's the thing, the biggest difference from taking your exam from home versus in person at a physical testing center is that the online exam requires three things from you. Number one, you must conduct a system test to verify your microphone, your internet, and your webcam and making sure that it meets all of Pearson View's testing software requirements. Number two, on the day of your actual online exam, you must complete a check-in process. And number three, because your exam is online, you will be continuously monitored by a real online proctor using your microphone and a webcam. So let's go through how to actually run your system test and what it looks like once you meet all of their requirements. After you've made sure that you have a compatible laptop and a webcam, head on over to Pearson View's testing website and run their system test on the exact laptop with your external webcam connected that you'll be using to take your exam. I'll be opening up my own MacBook Pro and we'll go through this step by step, the entire system test. All right, so here we're on Pearson View's online testing website for the PMP exam, and we're going to click on run system test. When you do that, another window will appear with an access code. Click on download to download the OnView software application and then open up the file. Once the software is opened, you'll have to copy the access code into the empty field. In this example, we're just doing an anonymous system test. So we'll click next. Make sure that your external webcam is connected to your laptop as we go through this. For the first step, click on start microphone check and you'll say, one, two, three, four. Next, you'll do a speakers test and you're gonna confirm if you can hear the music playing by clicking on yes. And third, you'll perform the webcam check. Here, you can see that my Logitech C922 webcam is working properly and you can see my face on the screen. So when you click on next, the software will check to make sure that your network meets the requirements to take the exam. Once that's done, it'll download the exam file and it will perform a browser test. Make sure to follow the instruction shown on the screen and click on test. Once you pass the test, it will show that there aren't any issues being detected and you can proceed to the next screen to launch the exam simulation on your computer. By the way, if you're getting a lot of value out of this video, make sure to smash that like button. On to part three. What happens on the day of your actual online exam? About 30 minutes before the start of your exam, you'll need to perform a check-in, which should take about roughly 15 minutes for you to complete. But Alvin, why are there so many things that I have to do? I mean, what's involved with the check-in process? Hey, don't worry, I got you, okay? So the check-in process is actually really quite easy, and there's nothing you should be worried about. All that's involved is three easy steps. Using your cell phone, you'll have to take a headshot photo of yourself. And afterwards, you'll need to take a picture of your photo ID or your driver's license. And then you'll need to take pictures of your surroundings to verify your workspace. You'll take pictures of the space in front of you, to the left and to the right of you, and of course, to the area behind you. So a total of four pictures. The online proctor will review your images to make sure that there aren't any issues with your workspace and they'll reach out to you using the live chat once the review is completed. Now, if you have any items on the wall, such as any art with words, movie posters, or whiteboards, the online proctor, they may want to visually inspect it. So here's my advice. Before the day of your exam, if you can, remove any art, posters, paper, and especially 
anything that has any writing on it just to make sure that your check-in process goes so much more smoother and faster. In your workspace, make sure, make 100% sure that you do not have any of your cell phone, any books, notepads, post-its, papers, pencils, or pens that's next to you. After you upload your photos, do not have your cell phone within arm's reach. Place it on the floor at the opposite side of the room if you have to, just in case the online proctor needs to reach you. You want to keep your area of your desk completely free of any material. Just remember, the only thing that should be in front of you should be your laptop with your webcam and an external mouse, and that's it and nothing more. Make it really easy for yourself. It does not have to be that hard. As a friendly reminder, you are not allowed to use an additional computer monitor during your exam. So if you do have one, turn it off and completely disconnect it from your laptop and from the power outlet. Even better if you can remove it from your workspace. Now what happens after you've completed check-in and you're finally taking your online exam? Well, after you start your exam, you cannot leave your room or move out of the proctor's view unless it's during the built-in breaks of your exam. Here's exactly what you should not do. Don't look off screen to the side, left, or right, and especially do not lean outside of the webcam. Do your very best to stay within the window of your webcam at all times. The online proctor may be very strict with this, so be on the safe side and be very careful here. Number two, don't have your hands in your mouth, and number three, don't talk to yourself during the exam. And what I mean by this is, do not read questions or answers out loud. The online proctor is very strict about this because they want to make sure that no one's cheating and they're upholding the integrity of the exam. Now, if you do have any questions for the proctor, you can use the chat feature of the testing software to reach out and contact them. So here are a few words of advice. There are several online testing rules that you must adhere by. Otherwise, the online proctor may disqualify and possibly terminate your exam. So pay very close attention here so you'll be set up for success. The first one, you are not allowed to cheat during your exam, take pictures of the questions, or even reference outside material while you're taking your exam. The exam is closed book. The second tip, do not have any unauthorized items on your workspace. So your cell phone, your calculators, your books, and your notes, these are not allowed to be next to you on your workspace. Third, you cannot leave your testing room during the exam. You can only leave the testing room during your two scheduled exam breaks. The first break is after finishing the first set of 60 questions, and the second break is after completing the second set of 60 questions. Here's my fourth tip. Before your exam, tell everyone in your house that they are not allowed to enter your room because if they do, they may risk the chance of having your exam be disqualified. So be very careful here. My fifth tip, before you start your check-in process, you must close all background applications on your computer, including your virus scanning software. Don't make the mistake of having random pop-up notifications appear while you're taking your exam. So if you're currently running Microsoft Word, uh, antivirus software, or the Adobe Creative Suite, make sure that it's closed. Close all software applications before you begin your check-in process. Let me show you how to do that. If you're using a Windows laptop, go to the search panel and type in background apps. A settings window will appear and you wanna make sure that all background applications are turned off and that they cannot run in the background. If you're using a MacBook, press Command plus Option plus Escape at the same time and the Force Quit Applications window will pop up. Click on each application and select Force Quit to close out the running applications in your background. I know that many of you might be concerned about your internet connectivity, so just make sure that it's stable and reliable. If your internet or your computer does crash during your exam, you will need to reschedule the exam through the Pearson OnView chat system or through PMI. Now, here are the biggest pointers of advice from this video. Number one, you need to find a quiet private room with zero distractions. Do not let anyone interrupt you or come inside while you're taking your exam. Number two, make sure to close your background software applications that are running on your computer. This includes even your antivirus software programs. So do this before you even start the check-in process. You know, it can be very scary if a software notification pops up 
while you're taking your exam and it causes your testing software to shut down or close, which means that you'll have to reschedule your entire exam. So do yourself a favor, close your background running applications before you start your check-in process. Number three, after you complete your check-in process, put your cell phone outside of your arm's length. It should not be on your workspace or your desk, but keep it inside of your room outside of your arm's length because if the online proctor does call you on your cell phone, you can easily grab it within the room to speak to your proctor. And number four, this is probably the most obvious one, be nice and friendly to your online proctor because if you run into any kind of issue with your testing software, the online proctor will be your go-to person to help you out. Now, if you'd like to dive deeper and learn exactly how I passed my own PMP exam, where I share with you how to solve every PMP question correctly and to learn the fundamentals of Agile 101, be sure to sign up for my free PMP exam mastery course over at alvinthepm.com slash bootcamp. To get started with practicing PMP exam questions, watch this entire video playlist so you can test your knowledge and be one step closer to passing your PMP exam.